My name is Zoe. Right now, I'm in the thick of studying for my 8th grade final exams. Being good at academics and loving interactions with people, I always enjoy thinking about everyone in my class when making decisions. Because of this, I also served on the student council, but us 8th graders will soon retire to focus on our upcoming exams. I try to treat everyone, my classmates and others, equally, but there was a person who I just couldn't get along with. His name was Mike. Mike was also a member of the student council, but I never knew what to say to him. He was very serious and, if anything, a bit of a grind. He didn't interact with many people, but he was smart, so he was part of the student council. One day, as usual, after the student council meeting, the younger students went home before us. Him. It's about time I start teaching the juniors how to clean up after committee meetings. I muttered, as if talking to Mike. But Mike, whether he heard me or not, just continued to sweep the floor silently, and then moved on to wiping off the blackboard. It's a bit awkward. I thought, and raised my voice so he could hear me better. It's finally a weekend tomorrow, huh? It's been a long week. As I said this, I looked at Mike and our eyes met suddenly. Mike then looked at me and let out a small sigh. You don't have to try so hard to make conversation with me. He said, busted, I thought to myself, feeling my face turn red. No, that's not what I meant. As I looked down and mumbled this, Mike gave a little chuckle. What do you do on your days off, Zoe? Mike asked while erasing the blackboard. I had never really had a personal conversation with Mike before, so I was momentarily taken aback by his sudden question. Huh, me? Mike laughed out loud at my flustered response. So Mike does laugh. I thought. I had never really pictured him laughing and chatting with other people, so seeing this unexpected side of him was surprising. Zoe. You're always so considerate of others. Or maybe it's more like you're thoughtful. I can see why everyone likes you. He said. Complimented, I felt myself blushing again. On my day off, I volunteer at a dog shelter. I really love animals. I replied, trying to regain my composure. Really? You love animals? Mike said. Suddenly like an innocent child, his face brightening up in a way I had never seen before. Yeah, I go to the shelter every time they have an event. Despite being surprised by Mike's expressions, I still managed to talk about how I spend my day off. No way. Everyone in my family loves animals too. My mom even goes to adoption events. Then, I might have met you mom there, huh? Just then, we heard the hustle and bustle of voices in the hallway. It was the soccer team members who had been practicing late. I saw them shuffling past the student council room in a line. Ah, it's getting late. Should we head home? Mike glanced at the clock and suggested. Oh, right. I agreed and we left the student council room together. Seeing Mike's smile and unexpected personality was surprising but it was also quite a fresh sensation. The next day. Hey, Zoe. You and Mike were alone in the student council room all day yesterday. Weren't you two flirting? Huh, is that true, Zoe? Even my friends seemed to believe what the boys had said. No, that's not true. We were just cleaning up after the student council. I realized I was getting a bit defensive. Really though, you two are always together for student council stuff. Are you sure you're not dating? My defensiveness had only escalated the boys teasing. Why would I date a nerd? No way. I pound the desk as I spoke, just as Mike walked into the classroom. Oh, I wonder if he heard that. I felt a cold shiver down my spine. Everyone around had gone silent, sensing the atmosphere. 
Mike sat down at his desk as if nothing had happened, opening his textbook. I hope he didn't hear that. I felt relieved, but also felt disgusted with myself. Over time, seeing Mike act as if nothing was wrong, my guilt started to fade away. Hey, Zoe. It was during the usual post-student council cleanup. What is it? Mike had started talking to me. Do you think I'm just a nerd? I felt a tight squeeze in my chest at his words. He heard it. I knew immediately that it was about that day, and I felt that guilt again, which had almost disappeared, now stronger. Zoe, I was thinking that maybe you thought. Mike's face was very glum. I immediately knew that I heard his feeling from his expression. But I didn't know what to say. Even if I didn't mend it, I still heard him. After that, I didn't talk to Mike much and once our student council duties were over, we graduated. I tried to apologize many times, but it seemed like Mike was avoiding me. On graduation day, I wanted to say something, but I couldn't muster up the courage. It's been 10 years since then. I was now 25 years old, having graduated from middle school. Mike's memory is still a fragment in my mind, but since we never saw each other again, I had no reason to remember him. But because Mike had loved animals, when I was interacting with animals, I would suddenly remember about him. My heart ached every time. I still loved animals. When I entered the high school, I became too busy with studying to participate in animal rescue activities, but I had decided that when I grew up, I would own a dog. Then, three years ago, I met a certain man and fell in love, and a year later, we started living together. It was supposed to lead to marriage, but soon I found out a difficult fact. I was unable to have children. I was infertile. After my partner's parents found out, as they desperately wanted grandchildren, they oppose our marriage. Yet, he said that he was okay with it and gave me an adorable puppy as a gift. We named the puppy Misty, who became like our child. Even with my infertility, I was convinced that he loved me. But that happiness didn't last long. Zoe, I'm sorry. I want to break up. When he suddenly asked for a breakup, I was terribly shocked. And when I heard his reasons, I felt as though I had been plunged into hell. The truth is, I found someone else, and she's pregnant with my child. Upon hearing those words, my mind went blank. You said it was okay that we couldn't have kids. Does this mean you've been cheating on me? I held Misty close and cried as I accused him. But he was just trying to appease me by bowing deeply a move which was too transparent. It made me even more angry, worsening my pain of being cheated on. But no matter what, a child's life is precious, even if it's from an affair. The next day, I left the apartment that I had lived in with him for two years, taking Misty with me. I don't think I can ever experience such love again. He was the ideal partner for me, although I've only lived for 25 years. It felt like the greatest romance. I began living alone with Misty. The heartbreak was still raw, but having Misty there helped me keep going. One day while out walking Misty, I accidentally let go of the leash. Excited to be free, little Misty took off running. Wait, it's dangerous. Misty was running towards the main road. I was running after her in a panic when it happened. A cyclist came around the corner and hit Misty. With a small yelp, her tiny body fell and rolled on the road. Misty. The cyclist also looked shocked, quickly apologized. I am sorry. And rode away, seemingly in a hurry. Misty was bleeding from her front leg. I immediately scooped her up and rushed her to the vet. It was late in the afternoon, just before closing time, but the vet who came out immediately took Misty into the examination room upon seeing her. I should never have let go of the leash. I explained in tears as the vet treated Misty, and then he spoke calmly. Her leg is broken, 
so she'll need to stay in for a bit. But she'll be okay. And please don't blame yourself too much. Upon hearing from the vet that Misty's life wasn't in danger, and thanks to his kindness, I breathed a sigh of relief. Then, I stared intently at the face of the vet as he proceeded with the treatment. Then, something about his serious expression as he looked at Misty seemed familiar. Uh, I let out a surprised gasp. Uh, when the vet turned towards me in surprise at my exclamation, I didn't hesitate to say, Mike. His eyes gradually took on a look of recognition as they were fixed on me, and we pointed at each other in mutual surprise. Zoe, it's you. Have you been well? You remembered me. He said with a happy tone in his voice, which made me feel somehow relieved. Of course, I remember. I replied. As I said this, memories of that day came flooding back into my mind. Despite the tight feeling in my chest, I managed to put on a smile. Misty will need to stay in for about a week. Mike told me as I was about to leave. Yeah, thanks. I potted Misty on the head, and I said my goodbye for now. And from the next day, whenever I had time, I went to check on Misty and asked about her condition. She's been doing much better. She's eating properly too. Mike informed me about Misty's condition with a smile on his face. I'm glad. I found myself feeling soothed by our casual conversation. By the way, Zoe, do you remember that time? He asked. It caused my heart to race. That time? I stuttered, which caused Mike to laugh out loud. You called me a nerd, remember? He teased me with a smile on his face. Ah, uh, yes. Actually, I've always wanted to apologize. About that. When I said that, Mike gently nodded in agreement. I'm sorry. About that time. It's okay. It's all good. Because I was such a nerd, I became a vet, and besides, we got to meet again. Above all, I got my inspiration to become a vet from that time. Hearing his words, I felt a different kind of tightness in my chest from before. Inspiration to become a vet. I may not have understood, but we got to meet again. Those words kept spinning round and round in my head. I haven't known Mike for very long since we reunited, but every time I went to the hospital, we filled the decade we hadn't met with various conversations. Four days later, it was the day before Misty was discharged. Mike, you know? As he finished writing the medical record, Mike looked at me. Are you off work? Surprised by my own words, I invited Mike for a tea. Mike accepted my invitation, so we went to a nearby cafe. There, I talked about how Misty and I ended up alone and about my infertility. For some reason, I wanted Mike to listen. I was beginning to notice. The pain of heartbreak was getting lighter than before. Misty will be discharged tomorrow. I had felt a sense of loneliness last night at the thought of seeing Mike less often. On the way home, I had thought about asking Mike for his contact information. But, I couldn't quite muster the courage. Well, I'll be waiting for you to pick up Misty tomorrow. It was when I tried to stop Mike, who was about to leave the place after saying that. This, I was hesitant, but I'll give it to you. I won't force you to take it. If, if you want, please contact me. He handed me a small note. When I opened it, his email address and cell phone number were written on it. I took it with a pounding heart and nodded slightly. I thought you didn't like me, so I gave up when I was a student. Huh? But we're adults now. We have to express our feelings properly. Does that mean? I stared at Mike with tearful eyes. It was truly a joy to find out we both love animals. And I'm even happier to have this reunion with you. You know, back in middle school, 
I couldn't decide of becoming either a pediatrician or a veterinarian. The passions we feel in our student years often become our future goals. When I heard you, Zoe, were involved in animal protection, I simply wanted to be involved with animals too, which led me to aim to become a veterinarian. Mike, who always speaks his heart, remains as sincere and caring as he was back then. Wow! I didn't know that. I'm so glad you became a vet, Mike, and that we were able to meet again like this. We both had embarrassed laugh at that. A year has passed since then. I take Misty for walks hand in hand with Mike. I never thought I would see him again, but our unexpected reunion has led me to start a new path with Mike. Soon, it will be a year since we started dating. Next to the park, there's a dog park. It was while watching Misty run around that. Hey. Mike, who was sitting next to me, spoke up. I want us to stay together forever. When I looked at him in surprise, he had a gentle smile on his face. But I... I was worried about having kids. Whether you want kids or not, it doesn't matter to me. No matter what, I'll always care for you, Zoe. I teared up at his kind words. Thank you. An unexpected proposal from him. With this man, I'm sure everything will be all right. I felt that way. It must have meant something that we knew each other from way back and were able to meet again. Let's break up. It was our second year of marriage. I was told by my husband, Matthew, that he wanted to end things. The reason was just a series of misunderstandings. Looking back now, I realized both of us were so young in our farts and actions, and I'm filled with regret. At that time, Matthew was constantly busy with work and always away on business trips, leaving me feeling lonely. Another business trip starting this weekend? We had plans to go shopping. I'm busy preparing for the next project now. Sorry. Fine, I understand. I had been becoming more and more confrontational with my husband, often snapping at him. After that, things became strained between us, and even when we were in the same room, we stopped having conversations. I remember well how concerned my mother-in-law Susan was about us. Hello. Oh, Susan, you're here early. I was free today, so I dropped by. The laundry isn't done yet, right? The weather is nice, so I'll take care of it. Also, I had a lot of oranges grown in the garden, so I made marmalade. You both love that, don't you? I brought some beefs too as well. Thank you as always, Susan. By the way, where's Matthew? It seems he's working again today. Oh, he was on a business trip last week too, right? He should make time to be a good husband on his days off. Although she didn't live with us, Susan frequently visited us during the weekdays to help with household chores caring for me as if I was her own daughter. If I was sick, she would fly over to help immediately, saying, You rest, leave the housework to me. After all, I've been a homemaker for years. She would then take care of all the housework. I loved her kindness and dependability, treating me well like my own mother would. Because of that, I always thought that breaking up with Matthew would sadden Susan, so I felt a need of finding way to mend the relationship between the two of us. However, I couldn't stop blaming busy Matthew. On that day too, he returned from his business trip late at night. His work kept him out late day after day, and with business trips extending into the weekends, we hadn't had a proper conversation in over a month. Welcome back. Um, there's something I want to talk about. I spoke up to him cautiously, and he replied, I just got back and I'm really tired. Can we talk about it tomorrow? I was given an overtly displeased look. Even if we wait until tomorrow, You'll rush off to work without time to talk, right? So, I'll say it now. Matthew, I want to think about having a child. What are your thoughts? All our peers already had kids. Even colleagues at work were giving birth one after another. I wanted a child soon too. That's why I confronted him about the issue that had been on my mind. In response, Matthew's face hardened in anger as he said, I'm sorry, but it's not feasible right now. We need to save money first. You understand that, right? But I'm getting older too and I believe it's better to have children sooner rather than later. Don't just focus on yourself. His words triggered me, and I blurted out, If you can't respect me, then let's just break up. Matthew's face showed sadness. 
Fine, if that's what you want, let's break up. With those words, it was decided. Once I had broached the topic, there was no turning back. So, in just our second year of marriage, we broke up without much ado. Since the divorce, I had been in relationships with men, but I couldn't forget Matthew, and none of those relationships lasted. I came to realize that Matthew had been the one for me. However, now that we had already broken up, no matter how much I regretted it, it was too late. Three years had passed since then, and here I was, approaching 40, still single and divorced. I had been considering whether staying single was the right choice, but I found it difficult to move forward. Then, one day, something unexpected happened. I was alone at home, having a meal alone on my day off, when suddenly my cell phone rang. I wondered who it could be and got startled when I saw the caller ID. It's, it's from Matthew. Even though it had been three years since we parted ways, I hadn't received a single phone call so when the phone rang, I hurriedly answered, wondering what could be the matter. Chloe, can you hear me? Sorry for calling out of the blue. Are you doing well? Yeah. Matthew's voice, unchanged from before, brought back memories. I felt tears welling up, but I managed to hold them back. Then, Matthew told me something that left me astonished. Hey, my mom has only about half a year left to live. What? I was so shocked that I couldn't even speak. After Matthew and I broke up, his mother would often contact me out of concern. Although the contact had stopped after a while, I still felt gratitude towards her for all the help. To think that she, who used to be so healthy, had fallen ill, and to hear that she had been given a terminal diagnosis. Tears welled up in my eyes too. Since Matthew comes from a single parent household and is an only child, for him, family consists only of his mother. Perhaps quite shaken, Matthew was crying over the phone. In a tearful voice, he said, She really wants to see you, Chloe. Can you find some time? After a brief pause, I replied, I understand. A few days later, I visited the hospital that Matthew had mentioned. In the hospital room, I found Matthew and significantly thinner mother-in-law. Long time no see, Susan. It really has been a while, Chloe. I'm glad to see you. Seeing her smile and hearing her familiar voice warmed my heart. Thank you for coming. Matthew, offering a smile tinged with loneliness, looked even more exhausted than I had imagined. Chloe, come over here. Let's have a pleasant chat after such a long time. Seeing Susan speak in the same tone as years ago, it was hard to believe that her life was coming to an end soon. I nodded and said, Sure. Holding back tears as I rushed to her bedside. From then on, the three of us engaged in casual conversations. We talked about Matthew's workplace, amusing stories from the hospital involving the nurses, and more. For the first time in a while, I felt like I was having a good time. As we wrapped up, Susan smiled and said, Please come again sometime. After I left, Matthew took the time to call me and express his gratitude. Thanks for today. My mom was really happy to see you, Chloe. If it's too much trouble to visit her at the hospital, you don't have to push yourself. It's all right. It's not difficult, and I have plenty of time. I responded that way. From then on, I made it a routine to visit the hospital after work and be a listening ear for Susan. Each time I return home, I recall the conversations of the day and simultaneously feel the approaching moment of parting. Tears start to well up on their own. Susan's condition didn't improve. In fact, she became thinner with each passing day. One day, Susan mumbled, I'd like the three of us to go on a trip. As she gazed out the window, Matthew was also in the hospital room and we exchanged glances. Yeah, you know what? Let's go for it and take a trip together. Matthew readily agreed, saying, Sounds great. We could go to a scenic place and just relax as the three of us. With beaming smiles in response to our words, Susan enthusiastically said, All right then, it's settled. I can't remember the last time I went on a trip. I'm looking forward to it. After that, Matthew and I obtained permission to leave the hospital. The attending physician told us, Make some joyful memories together. Considering Susan's health, we decided to choose a location for a trip that is close to the hospital and plan to stay at a mountain inn where we can enjoy ourselves. Matthew and I worked together to plan the trip, carefully selecting the menu and choosing wheelchair-friendly sightseeing spots for the following day. The process of making these decisions together brought back memories of our time as a couple. While gazing at a tourist magazine, 
I looked at his face as he earnestly pondered where we should choose, and I realized once again that I still have feelings for this person. Then came the day of the trip. We enjoyed beautiful views and took numerous photos together at the destination. Dinner was specially prepared to suit Susan's condition, and it seemed she enjoyed her meal. Before going to sleep, I helped Susan wash her body in the open-air bath right next to her room. Thank you so much for today. We've created some really nice memories. You know, about Matthew, even though you're divorced. If you don't dislike him, please continue to look after him. He might seem strong, but he's quite a crybaby. After he divorced you, he went through a tough time, feeling down. I told him so many times that if that was the case, he shouldn't have divorced. But even after that, he couldn't find someone he liked. I wonder how things are for you, Chloe. I didn't know how to respond and remained silent. I still have feelings for Matthew. I want to continue supporting him. I wonder if he still thinks about me. Thoughts like these kept swirling in my head. And so, after the trip, Susan thanked us saying, thank you for the happy time, and returned to her life in the hospital. It was truly heartwarming to see Susan so happy. Matthew and I exchanged smiles. Then, after a while, on a day when the autumn wind suddenly grew stronger, I received a call from Matthew and he told me that Susan's condition had deteriorated rapidly and that she would need an emergency surgery. What? Surgery all of a sudden? I'll be there right away, wait for me. I rushed to the hospital. The surgery was expected to be lengthy and the doctor even advised us to prepare for the worst. Both Matthew and I anxiously waited for the surgery to finish in the empty hospital room without Susan. We couldn't stop our tears due to the anxiety. At that moment, my eyes were drawn to an envelope on the shelf in the room. Curiously, I picked up the envelope. This might be. Inside were two letters, one addressed to me and one to Matthew. Beneath the letters was a single DVD with the words for the two of you written on it. When I opened the letter addressed to me, it was filled with expressions of gratitude and memories from our final trip together. Then the letter concluded with the words, You were the best daughter-in-law to me. I truly felt like you were my daughter. Please live a happy life from now on. I will always be watching over you. Tears streamed down my cheeks, one after another. Matthew, who was sitting next to me, also cried for a while after reading the letter. We decided to watch the remaining DVD on the hospital TV. It seemed that the DVD had been recorded with the help of the nurses while we were away. The screen displayed scenes of Susan within the hospital. While you're watching this footage, it's quite unfortunate, but I won't be by your side anymore. This is my final message to you. Please listen carefully. From now on, the two of you must find happiness. I see through everything about you two. Be honest with each other. I sincerely hope things go well for you both. I won't be able to talk to you by your side anymore, but I'll always be watching, so don't feel lonely. Thank you so much for everything until now. The images ended there. We couldn't stop our tears, crying so much that our tears seemed to dry up. Susan had prepared letters and videos for us to leave a message after her parsing. Her kindness left us with nothing but tears. After a lengthy surgery, Susan's condition stabilized, and she survived without any major complications. Chloe, how about we go to that restaurant you mentioned wanting to visit on the next break? Yeah, sounds good. Currently, I'm living together with Matthew. On the night of the successful surgery, he confessed his feelings to me. I still love you, Chloe. If you're okay with it, I want to keep seeing you. Of course, I nodded. After that, we tried to make up for the lost time by visiting the park where we had our first date, exploring the town where we met, and spending time together as a couple, and then, officially in a relationship, one year later. I want you to marry me. Yes. I received Matthew's second proposal. We need to tell my mom. Let's go visit her together. After undergoing repeated surgeries and fighting through illness, Susan managed to overcome critical conditions and survive. Thanks to Susan, we were able to give it another shot. Then Matthew said, I couldn't forget about you all this time. I was crying my eyes out while talking to my mom about it. Blushing as he said it, his cheeks turned a shade of red. His words made me feel a bit embarrassed too. Afterward, we submitted our marriage registration again and officially became husband and wife. Thanks to Susan, we were able to start over like this. I can't express my gratitude enough. And now, I'm finally carrying Matthew's child, fulfilling my long-held wish.
Susan mentioned that looking at her grandchild's face in the future is what gives her motivation. I'm also looking forward to having Susan see my child who will be born soon.